Yes. A thick one. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another Thursday, another Carvers and Creators. This is season two, episode 33 of Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists. We please ask that you please give us a like and a follow on the platform you're watching us on. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from. And if you have any comments uh, and or questions for the carvers or our special guests, let's meet the carvers. First, he's an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts. He's a 2019 champion of Food Network's Outrageous Pumpkins. Paul Dever, welcome. <laughs> Hola, que tal? Me amo Pablo. <laughs> Hola. All those tacos, now you're speaking Spanish. I know. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's loco. Taco, Thurs Taco Thursday in Boston? Yes, tonight was. Totally. Next, he's a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and a finalist on Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network, Matt Harper. Welcome. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Daddy. Hello from Tucson. Our guest tonight is an artist, sculptor. He is the owner of Dark Heart Creations. He's creating custom art and statues from Orlando, Florida. Please welcome Casey Cross. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. So glad you're here. Yeah, we're stoked. We're excited. Hey, man. This will be, this I, I, will be I don't want to go for, away from this picture too fast. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> But that was just that that was I don't I don't I don't have an alien coming out of mine. I'm Michael Mondrag and I'll be running the show, moderating comments and chiming in from time to time. Sexy beast. Oh. Oh, you stop. No, well, you nasty <laughs> little minx. Oh, uh, let's check out our uh, carves from last week. Uh, the subject was <laughs> enraged mutating. So Matt, what do you got here? I don't know. It's a, it's a <laughs> All right, so I had this kind of like ball-shaped kabocha squash, which they're normally kind of flat like this, but that one was kind of more. So I turned it on its side, and I had I started like because like anytime we spin the wheel, we don't really know what the hell we're gonna do while we're carving. We're like, I guess because you know it's it's that moment of anxiety. So I got a guy coming out of his mouth. He's transforming. And he's enraged about it or something. I, that's kind of my. But the whole time I was channeling, you know, the the thing, you know, when all this stuff, everything just keeps coming out and like another face. And like, that's what I was trying to uh, to, to kind of get my head around. But uh, anyway, that was uh, there's my my little fellow. It's awesome, man. The uh, smaller face, the smaller faces is, is very small and very detailed. Like the emotion reads through like even the forehead wrinkles a dynamite. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank so you. cool. Super, super cool. <laughs> and you, how, how do you not? That's the thing. We were both drawn to that um, movie because of Rob, mm -hmm. Mr. Berman. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, if you if you can say we're, we're talking to a guy who actually worked on that age, I think he was 19 or something when that. Crazy. And I'm just like, I, at that point, I'm like, all right, well, whatever I make is just going to be this little tiny flicker of a, a light in a giant, you know, dark chasm compared to what he does. But still, it's my homage, my little homage to him. I think there's people out there that will never never eat a kaboka squash again in case it's infected. Like that. Yeah. You yeah, may this, have this, one, this one's dangerous. This one's dangerous. Totally. <laughs> Paul, knocking Dang. it out of the park again. Holy shit! Yeah. It's, yeah. Okay, here's, here's what I. It's badass, Paul. Stop it. The thing really? I love about what you've been doing lately that has just been like awesome is your ability to do. Uh, like those appendages like are speak you know that's out of alien that's out of you know a million different things obviously right out of thing but when it comes to the they have a motion the way his face does because when it's pointing they're they're out that's just and i know that's not easy to, to to sculpt uh and get that out of but it that is equally as impressive as the, the, the face to me yeah the, the face is definitely awesome for sure really thank you <laughs> thank you guys because you know what? I'm just going to stop even having a comment on my own <laughs> stuff anymore. Yeah, not my favorite. But that's the thing, right? Because if I don't like it, I think that's usually when 
a lot of other people like it. So maybe my taste sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where I'm at is if I yeah. like it, it's no good. But if I don't like it, it's good. You're onto something. There you go. Right. <laughs> I'm off to something. Yes. But I think this one, I think this one would have had a different feel if, I mean, it would have been amazing if it was just the face, but the fact that you made it kind of like, you know, uh, the, the 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 crustacean Stubble. part of it, you know, like the legs out of it, it, yeah, it man, gives it a whole man. different feel to it. Totally. Yeah, that's the way I think it. Those legs really put it on another level as a feeling, the way it looks, for sure. Yeah, yeah, super creepy. Super creepier, I should say. Well, thank God I yelled at myself for a half hour saying <laughs> it wasn't enough. <laughs> I had to do legs. <laughs> uh, All thanks, right. I work yeah. in uh, pixels and vectors, so here is mine oh. for this week. Holy yeah. guys, uh, the hell's in the So I started thinking Ooh. about it. I was Damn. like, when you talk about mutating, and I was like, oh, I should just make this kind of like crazy uh, blob of something like lava or, or something like that, and then just try to find shapes with it, within it. And then there was this really, there's this part that looks, it looked like a, a perfect place for a face, and then there was kind of like a larva body. body yeah, part. the body. Yeah. yeah. Holy so, crap. um, and if, if I, if I actually make the, if I actually, um, <laughs> were to take this out, I, it's, it's super huge too. So it's, um, oh. it's actually way bigger than this. So, um, and then I, you know, I, I, throw, I always throw the lettering in there somewhere. So it's always kind of like an Easter egg, but, um, uh, but yeah, I was like, I just, I just, again, I, this challenge is awesome because it really pushes my creativity, uh, to make something that I, that I, I wouldn't just normally. Uh, oh, I'll just make this, and it'll it'll suffice. But I, I try to push myself on you, this one. Sure. See, How, you oh, you've oh. graduated too because this one isn't a T-shirt or an album cover. This one is a poster. Yes, <laughs> that's a dynamite poster. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. yeah, thank that's, you, thank you, thank you so much. As, it's creepy as hell. I mean, everything about it, making the, the larva part, and the, it, it reads so well. It's it's totally different than anything you've ever made, though, to me. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, Again, it's like just what we were talking about, the wheel. It pushes us. On that note, Casey, I'd like to introduce you to the fourth member of Carvers and Creators responsible for choosing our carving subject tonight. It is the hollow wheel, the center spinner, and Paul will tell you more about it right now. Well, happy Thursday, everybody. Let me get down into your view. Hi. All Hi, right. Everybody. So here we have the wheel. The wheel of the center spinner, the wheel of doom, the anxiety express. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin it two times. First time is going to be the inner subject, which will be whoever or whatever we're going to carve. So this will start off with villain, non-face, nightmare fuel, voluptuous, fantasy, psychopathic, outer space, guest choice, cartoon-ish. So we're going to go a different route with that and primate. And then on the second spin, we'll have a repulsive, horny, terrified, enraged, irritated, elated, grizzled, stoned, euphoric, or confused. So the combinations, guys, are endless. I know exactly what it's going to land on. <laughs> oh, God. Well, no face. It's going to be, you know what? I, I have to be like Dan Aykroyd in Ghostbusters and not think of the one thing as a kid so that the stay puff marshmallow man doesn't come rolling down the street <laughs> yeah is what remember paul also if you start it from a different place instead of from the top oh maybe, oh you know sometimes that works there you go okay what if i spin it extra hard oh, double. yes guest choice all right start thinking now okay so all right here we go spin two Stoned guest choice. And, and, and just for the record, same exact slot. Oh, what wow. the living mother of Mary. Papa, yeah. don't ever tell me to move that thing again from where it was. <laughs> and you, you spun it, not me. I don't know how you fix the wheel from Tucson, but that was <laughs> impressive. <clears throat> right. Stoned ah, okay. and whatever Casey says we got to do. Yeah. I like the, the nightmare fuel. Sounds great. I, I I like your attitude. I really Stone do. nightmare fuel. Oh god. Okay. Stone nightmare fuel. That wow. sounds like me. And when I'm stoned, it's like a nightmare. Oh, wow. Like okay. Stone, stone nightmare. Fuel. All right. 
I, I, here we go. Holy crap. Good choice. <clears throat> Put it tall on this one. So I need to droop. Mm. All right. I got to think of, I got, <laughs> speaking of nightmare fuel, I got to think of what the hell. I guess stone is like red eyes and squinty, or what the hell does stone look like? I guess a, I, I don't smoke, you know, the ganj, so I'm like, I yeah, just got a lot of people who do, but I'm just trying to picture their faces. <laughs> I want to call Ray right now. <laughs> I want to phone a friend. It could be mellow. Oh, like, oh yeah, I'd say. Yeah. Or, or they could identify as stoned, and it mm. could be whatever you want. There we go. That's always a, <laughs> that's the play. All, All right. right. Okay. Moving on. So let's uh, let's go around and do our traditional uh, carving oil. See what everybody is uh, using to lubricate the old uh, creative joints. Uh, Casey, what are you starting out with? Uh, pansy. I'm doing apple juice. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> in a in a rock in a rock glass of all things. <laughs> yeah, I like the weight of it. It's, it works for me. Perfect. And a boy, and a boy. We Perfect. went. We we thought it was brown water. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's brown water. <laughs> Matt, what do you got? Um, well, because of the uh, because of our guest choice to go brown water, I I picked um, Elijah Craig Rye off the off the countertop, and uh, I'll be having some of that on some of these. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this night goes. Especially it might. What, what's the what's the theme again? Uh, stoned stone and nightmare fuel. Nightmare fuel. Yeah, I'm about drunk to become... sculptor. That's drunk <laughs> sculptor. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. There you go. Paul, what do you got? I too was fooled by the um, tomfoolery of one Casey Cross showing his brown water. So I wanted to make him feel comfortable. So I went with a beautiful single malt Scotch whiskey, Lafrogue, Irish, and it's fantastic. And I can't wait to finish it off. With a <laughs> and maybe I'll top it with some apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it actually probably would be really good because it's got a peaty flavor to it. I was gonna say he threw you a curveball, but I think he threw you a screwball because you guys are totally like, off, like wow, you guys are totally off your game on this one. He threw <laughs> us a peat, he threw us a peat ball. <laughs> yeah. So uh, humana, humana. it's it's been a uh, it's been a long week. So I'm just going with some hop tea. So some some uh, I don't know, of course there you go. There, there it is. Hop. Sparkling hop tea. So just going with that. It's hoppy, citra hoppy. So. Uh, cheers to all the creations that we're making. If you're uh, creating with us now, uh, definitely would love to see what you're making. There you go. Maddie, you know, Maddie, yeah. oh, there we go. There we go. There. I can get up. up to the <laughs> camera, to the side of the camera. Oh, this one. I have to go yeah, sideways. The there you go. Clink, clink. Clink. I'm not cheers an apple juice or a pop tea. You're, <laughs> you're, in, you're in a boat for two. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Uh, uh, Casey, uh, you know we're going to show some of your work uh, throughout the whole show, but um, some tremendous uh, ones to start with. Obviously, Ren and Stimpy. Um, I, I, remember, I, <laughs> I remember when Ren and Stimpy came out, it was like it was at the time it was super um, like there there wasn't like animation like this. And, uh, you know, what kind of uh, animation and and pop culture did you grow up with that that really inspired you yeah the same kind the, the ren and stimpy and the, and like the thundercats and the transformers that kind of stuff growing up in yeah. the 80s you know anything 80s and 90s i'm like totally on board as far as cartoons and movies and stuff that's what i grew yeah. up on right? right on yeah same here I, I have a feeling we're, we're close you're probably younger than us but you're close to the same age and um Pop Mickey, as you'll find out, is a, is a pop culture uh, re renaissance man. He knows every goddamn thing about it. But uh, uh, but I'm, I'm with you. I think when it comes to like those cartoons, when's the last time you saw anything like Ren and Stimpy? I guess maybe Rick and Morty is like the new Ren and Stimpy. But even that, it's like uh, I don't. I don't, to, not I don't just know. to butt in a little bit. I feel like Ren and Stimpy opened the door because 
Ren and Stimpy and Beavis and Butthead were the first two cartoons where you're like, what did they just say? Yeah, what? Yeah, that's some good and one. now you have cartoons like The Simpsons and Family Guy and American Dad and South Park. And it's like they're the pioneers of that comedy that was – you didn't hear cartoons talk like that before. No. Right. Right. You fat, bloated <laughs> idiot. You coveted yeah. my ice cream bar. <laughs> <laughs> But one of my favorite episodes, and then and I'll get back to how amazing this sculpt is, but um, is is when um, when there's the he's, they go door to door selling rubber nipples, and they go to the they, they go to the horse's house, and oh, um, and he's uh, and, and he comes to the door and he's like all shaking. And he's like, "What do you know? Who told you?" And and then and he leans he goes, he, goes he, he leans forward. He says, "Call the police." <laughs> 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 he was in dire straits. I'm like, what the hell? Who would even think of that? It's just awesome. Well, when they did uh, the, when they did the ad for Gritty Kitty, and the horse came out, and they're like, "What you think?" And he's like, "No, sir, mm. I didn't like it." Yeah. Like it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna put you all on the spot. What is right. Ren's last name? Oh, it's Hope. Yeah. What is it? It's Hope. Hope again. Sorry. Hope. Nicely. Wow. Done. Simpson J. <laughs> Simpson J. Cat, and, and he's an asthma hound chihuahua. <laughs> Again, it 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 all, always proves like when we like something or love something, we just want to know so much more about it. And uh, you know, we we've seen this. You know, obviously, uh, like you know, uh, huge fans of uh, you know this movie. So it's like this. This seems to be the gateway movie for a lot of people just to you know explore all these characters I, i'm was it for you casey yeah absolutely uh like i said i grew up during that time period so all those are like dear to me i i, I love all those movies the ghostbusters and the beetlejuice and all that kind of stuff is i got them tattooed on my body so i'm a pretty big fan all right <laughs> hey can i can i just ask what's the subject again Stone uh, nightmare, fuel. nightmare fuel. I didn't see anything in the chat. That's why I was. Oh yeah, I can I can put it there too. I wasn't I wasn't putting you on the spot there, Mac. I'm just saying I you know oh, I already good. forgot. Good. My ADD <laughs> kicked in when I heard Ghostbusters and and saw Goonies. I lost all track of, train of thought. Yeah, those uh, are great. So my my whole thing with you, Casey, is the volume that you put work out and posted on Instagram. That's what caught me right away was, holy shit, shit, that's another one. How is he doing these these fast? Yeah. And you, you, you said you can do what, one every day, one every two days? Yeah, the, about 10, 12 uh, inches, inch figures and bust. I do them about, about two to three days, usually. Wow. Man. Man, and, they're, and, they're, and they're all one of a kind. Are you, are you is it, I'm assuming you have a line of, uh, I know these are all interesting to you from a subject matter, but do you have a line of folks saying, all right, this is my commission, my commission. Um, and, and then just, you send off the one, the one off pieces and how that, how that works. Yeah. They just uh, message me what they want, the size. And I just uh, bust it out for them. And uh, wow. I don't use, I don't do any molding or casting of anything. I don't sell copies. I don't do that. I just do straight custom uh, pieces. Wow. So no molding at all, huh? No, I don't do any more casting. I used to, but uh, I don't do that anymore. Just strictly custom pieces now. Uh, it's a good move. We've, we've we've had a couple guests that do the same exact thing. Yeah, it's a it's a good move. Not for me, I mean, because I would rather just make something <laughs> than make a million of it. Yeah, for, unfortunately, for, for... I haven't figured out how to do that yet, so I go with squash because those last because <laughs> they last so long. I was gonna say, Paul. It's like for us. It's uh, we thank God for cameras, or, or no one would ever see these things. A hundred percent. They uh, they turn to you know, they, they rot quite quickly. Like Simone. Yeah. So Casey, you are creating with us uh, today. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Nice. Not with the squash. I don't have any squash, and my squash sculpting skills are zero. Pretty Where much. Where the squash? Where the squash covers? We'll leave it to the professionals. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do for a living? I cut squash. Uh, All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go now. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 okay. Yeah. You stand here. I'm gonna run. No, seriously. What do you do for a living? 
<laughs> no, really. So, so uh, you're doing it in clay, Casey? Yeah, I'm uh, using monster clay uh, medium. Okay. okay. Yeah, and you were saying that you broke it down into slivers to make it, to make it easier to warm up. Uh, I'm I'm actually interested to see you work like that. That's pretty cool. Because I know from my experience with monster clay that I'm running up and down stairs to the microwave every. Yeah, that gets that gets annoying. The digging it out of the tub gets annoying, so I just dig it out in slivers. It heats up quicker. I mean, just small yeah. slivers with a little sculpting tool. Just dig it out, make a pile, and then you know, put it on your armor chair like skin. Okay. Yeah, once it's warm, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? It's um, it's a pretty crazy medium to work in. I gotta it's, try that. It's cool, but you know, like we've heard from you know, like uh, Jonathan Fuller and stuff. It's it's good if you're working on something that you, you you plan on taking your time on, right? So a lot of the a lot of these guys that get commissioned to work to do masks and stuff, they don't have that kind of time, right? So they're they want to go right for the wed clay because it's easy to work with and they can mold it fast. And whereas the monster clay is cool because it becomes sort of like a statue. It becomes firm enough, almost like a wax, if you don't oh. if you don't work work it with your hands and, and heat it up. So I unfortunately don't have the room for wet clay. I wish I did. I would be slinging that shit all over my kitchen if I could. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd also be single and my kitchen would be in an apartment <laughs> away from my old home with my family. <laughs> She'd divorce me in a heartbeat. <laughs> Now we got some fans of Casey in the chat. Thank you for joining us, Johnny. Who isn't? He's amazing. Oh, yeah. Now, Case, what, what do you do for inspiration? Because like I said, you put the volume of stuff that you're putting out, and we, we talked about this in the pre-show, is so Matt and I put ourselves on the spot by not having the idea, having the idea thrown at us, and we're forced to take the challenge, almost like a double dog dare I do to sculpt this. You, on the other hand, are able to come up with original ideas and then you you tap into the pop culture thing and it's so consistent like i know when i log on to instagram there's going to be a new post from you with something new not the same post that like some people love to post their shit from two years ago 4800 times you're posting new stuff all the time how do you do that that's insane yeah, it's the, the, the volume of requests I get. It's it's ongoing. It's like daily. I get people wanting uh, stuff made every day, basically. And uh, wow. I just kind of pick and choose what I want to do. And and then I can only take so much, you know. But it's usually really neat ideas. They tell me what they want. If they either want something specific or they want me to put my spin on it, I ask all the right questions. And then I come up with what you see on my Instagram or on my pages. That's crazy. So when I played in a band, people would have requests all the time too. And we would just lie and say that the next song we were going to play was covered by the band of the song that they requested. <laughs> so, so if somebody wanted to, you know, Hey, play this James Brown song, be like, well, this next song is by Otis Redding, but he covered it too. And <laughs> so therefore, yeah. yeah. So, I don't know if I could take all those kind of requests. <laughs> well, I, but I, I got to ask you though, Casey, because when you do when you do those kind of requests, and you're getting them. People know your work now, and they know that the, the kinds of cool things you can do from like a specific pop culture, you know, specifically movies and pop culture and TV and everything else, cartoons. But when it comes to um, your process, is it then all right? You, you sit down and research them. You find some good poses. You find some, you know, you know, other. So my, mine, I, I try to find like if I if I do get a um, a, uh, a subject I can look at, like I'll, I'll, I'll kind of use something online or something. But what's your next step after you get a commission from somebody? I ask them uh, for reference and see if they wanted a certain pose. Yeah, reference is definitely uh, a really good help because it's like I get a bunch of reference and then I'll pick like that face or that smile or maybe those eyes and. It's kind of like a collage of all the references, and then I put my twist on it. I got you. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, so it's, sometimes they don't even give me anything to go by. They just like, hey, which is happening a lot more often there. They just say, I want this character in your style. And then that's what they leave it at. Oh, wow. So, okay. And that's the dream, right? That's what you want. You want somebody to see your style and your work. Yeah. That's, what, that's what you're looking for. You want somebody yeah, to appreciate absolutely. your style. Yeah. Yeah. That's the ultimate compliment. Totally. Yep. Yeah. Whenever, whenever anyone says to Paul and I, you know, like we get a, a carving gig or something, or even I'm sure Mickey, when you get like a, a creative gig for any kind of logo or whatever, when they say you be you, you go do your thing. I, I like, and then it's like, okay, I love you. You know, but as soon yeah. as you get the, okay, no, it has to be just like that. But <laughs> then I'm like, okay. Yeah. I might, I might not be your guy. <laughs> oh yeah constantly with that but uh, that's a good set of rules to have too as an artist there you know some there's great artists out there and we know many of them that are able to duplicate just from a photo looking at a, uh, a photo of a sculpture they can make an exact copy of that which is such a talent it's, it's mm -hmm. god given talent I do not have such God-given talent. I can give you my rendition of it. I think I got a warped enough mind that hopefully people think my rendition of it is pretty cool. But that's <laughs> why when I go into stuff like that, when I get requests to do things, it's always, it's got to be done my way. Like, I can only do it my way. I can't give you an exact copy of that in a pumpkin <laughs> or, or a squash or sometimes clay. It has to be done in my way. And when somebody comes back and says, no, that's what I want. I want your version of it. That makes me happy. You know, that takes, it, it puts, it puts a good, the good kind of pressure on it. Cause you want it to be really done. You want to do it really well. And it takes the bad pressure off where they're like, well, if it doesn't look like Christian Bale from a three quarter angle at, you know, a dim light and it's not fluorescent <laughs> and you know, you're not getting paid. So, <laughs> But I guess I don't have that problem. Not a lot of people ask me for Christian Bale. So thank <laughs> Christ. Hey, yeah. don't just, just that's the one that's the one you don't ask him about, okay, everyone? Just don't yeah, well, him. yeah, that's my disclaimer. It says no Christian Bales. No Christian Bales. He can't get a ton of calls or please do some Christian Bale. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> it's, kind of it's, it's like the wheel, you know, the subject on the wheel. <laughs> It'll land on it. Yeah, well, good thing it's in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> So have there been, uh, Casey, I, mean, I know Mickey's got a lot of pictures of your stuff, and we'll certainly, I just, is there is there one that you've made that either it was a commission or just something on your own that you'd like, that is that is my favorite one, or I'm, I want to do more of that one, or anything, is there any any specific uh, character or design that you just absolutely love? Um, I'm, uh, I would like to do more Ninja Turtle stuff. I'm really nice. a big fan of turtles. I did a Bebop here uh, recently. That's and, hard, uh, it was great. Yeah, it's uh, I'd like to do more of that, that kind of stuff. There's like so many really well put together characters that, uh, like you know, Baxter Stockman and the rest of those guys. This that would be really cool in a really crazy, trippy style. I've seen some really cool Ninja Turtle things where they make them like hyper realistic looking. Like, have you seen those where you mean they're they 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 they've taken kind of the fun concept of what was an 80s cartoon and made it into like. Holy shit, that thing's scary looking. You know, just Dan you know, did that. Yeah, that's yeah, right. That's yeah. Dan did Bebop like that, and it was that's right. That's I just that's so cool. That's so cool. What a good idea. So is uh is something like this, is this like your own character or is it based off something? Actually, actually that's a one out one horn purple flying purple people leader. Oh my, I'm a ah, oh, okay. oh, purple people. Eater. There you go. <laughs> Mick, shame on you for not knowing that. Well, you know what? It's, uh, I was, I didn't want to be wrong, and and, and that would be the. the <laughs> and so shame. I'm like, I, I think go. that it is, and I was like, I I, I was like, was this an original create? Or was it based on it or something like that? So I did not want to assume. Because we know what happens when I assume, right? Oh, Makes an yeah. ass out of you and me. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's, that's awesome. Uh, so, yeah. So, like, like I mean, do you do uh, you just make them, or or uh, people ask you for this one, or was this one? 
Yeah, that one uh, was one. I've got a convention coming up, and I'm just building a lot of stuff to sell at the convention. And uh, mm. so in between my uh, my commission work, I just build random stuff that I think would be cool to take and uh, take and sell at the uh, convention. Oh, very That's cool. cool. And you do what it at a breakneck pace. So, like, how how long did that take I, I, from soup to nuts? Maybe three days. Wow, that's fast. Jesus. Okay. Now, do you paint? Do you paint it and then bake it, or do you bake it then paint it? Or yeah, it's a polymer clay, so I bake it and then I paint it, and okay. then I clear coat it so that it seals the paint job. Right on. Mm -hmm. And it's all hand painted too. No airbrushing, right? Yeah, it's all hand painted. Very wow. nice, man. Very oh, nice. Crap. Is this convention in three weeks? Uh, the MegaCon in Orlando. So it's like a month away or so. Wow. Something like that. I'm trying to think. It's Mar It's May 19th through the 22nd. So I'm not... May 19th? We're, we're seriously in Orlando during we're that time. We're in... Yeah, right on. Just did stop by. They got a lot of cool people going uh, to be at that commission. Wait a minute. So, uh, holy crap. So, really? The start's the 19th? 19th through the 22nd, math. yeah. All right, let me let me just take a look here. Because Sunday, I think, is the 16th. No, the 19th, though, is a Tuesday. Tuesday. No, it should be like a Thursday or something, right? That would be the 21st. He said May. Oh, May? He said May? Yeah, May. Yeah, May. Oh, oh May. No. Okay, okay. okay. Everything in April. Never mind. God bless Look, Hey, Matt, you heard the same thing. <laughs> I, I My mind went to Orlando and next month, and I, I, I couldn't help myself. Yeah. Matt, I'll tell you what. I'm going to I'm gonna sculpt you something. I'm going to bring it with you so you don't feel like Casey screwed us on the I'll, date. I'll do the same, Paul. I'm bringing, I'm bringing <laughs> you this. Oh, I'm sure our wives will be pumped if we sit by the pool and sculpt. <laughs> I'll be so happy. Our kids will be ecstatic. Yeah, they'll be like, oh, great. Dad's carving. Well, great. Dad's doing the same thing he does all the time. So yeah, Maddie and I, I don't know if we've, I think we've said it on the show, but are headed your way for April vacation for, you know, the school, but we're, I'm taking my family to Universal and Matt is taking his family to Disney, which is a stone's throw away from each other. Mm -hmm. And we are going to interlock at some point and find some time to uh, meet up because our schedules are pretty much the same. We have one down day while we're both while both families are there, and it seems to be the same day. It's the exact same day. It's Wednesday, the whatever of the month, of week, of day. Of, yeah. Now, now I don't even know what the day is. But whatever that Wednesday is after Easter, that's the one it is. Yeah. 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 Hey, and guess where I'm? Guess where I'm spending my Easter? At Bob Molly's restaurant, man. Oh, really? Yeah, we're gonna do a little jerk chicken um, resurrection dinner. <laughs> <laughs> is that what happened? I don't know. I think that I think that's nightmare fuel. That's nightmare fuel. Yes, that's I'm gonna carve Bob Marley <laughs> You're not really gonna have him for Easter dinner, right? No, 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 no. It's gonna be Ziggy. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> That'd be that would be sacrilegious if I had Bob. You can't. Yes. Yeah, well, I tried to get it, dude. I tried to get it. Uh, Casey, you might know this. You ever eat at the Chocolate Emporium? On the yeah, city walk, absolutely. yeah, that's really hard to get a reservation at when there's 17 million people with children that ha want to eat at a restaurant that has chocolate in the title. <laughs> yeah, I could get a 11:30 at night reservation all week if I wanted. <laughs> that's what you want. That's when I want to stuff my kids full of sugar. Yeah, your kids <laughs> stay up, stay up. Yeah, yeah, good times. But Bob Miley's was open, so I'm very happy. So Iriman. That's gonna be fun. So, so, Casey, do you do you have living in in Orlando? Do you frequent any of the? I mean, again, if I I live in Tucson and, and we get a tourist season just like Boston does in the summer, but we try to stay away from touristy things. Um, but you know, that said, I mean, Mickey lives in L.A., so there's a million tourist things to go hit. Do you do you avoid them or do you just embrace it? Yeah, it's I avoid them most of the time. The weights. Are ridiculous. I mean, unless you've got oh, the fast pass or whatever, you want to pay that extra thousand dollars or whatever it is now to try to do the fast that. pass. And, uh, oh, I, I mean, it's that, not yeah. that high, but you know, I mean, it's it's pretty ridiculous. And you're waiting in lines forever. And I'm not trying to be, you know, roasted in the sun for hours. 
Yeah, F that. That's well, let's there. put it this way. I've walked out of a line with a gallon of milk with small kids when there was two people in front of me trying to play scratch tickets. That's how impatient I am. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I paid out the bunghole for the fast pass. <laughs> I if And if I got to wait in line there, I may just burn the park down. So... <laughs> I don't. I waited. In, I waited for "It's a Small World" when we took the kids to Disney for forty-five minutes, and that was it. I still can't get the friggin' song out of my head, and it, that's my nightmare fuel: is waiting in a line that long. That's, and that, that, was only, that wasn't even that long. Forty-five minutes apparently is not long to wait in a line. No, no. Yeah, the um, the the lines. They they try actually they've got at Disney at least they've gotten pretty good at trying to keep you interested or occupied what you know so you're not just like staring at the back of some sweaty guy's back in front of you um, which is normally what happens when you're in Florida so hopefully it won't be too hot when we're there but when it comes to like uh, like having to do those fast pass things and now they're making you pay for it if I, it wasn't that long ago that you could just if you just let's say I walk up to a thing and I want to go on that ride but it looks like it's a big line so I can get a fast pass. Come back in two hours and I walk back. back. Yeah. So now now you have to pay for that beautiful privilege of coming back in two hours. And I mean it's like good lord. I mean they're just they're milking us. They're milking us poor, you know, bastards to death just because my kids happen to like the place, you know. I guess well, you can milk me like a cow. <laughs> I'll do it all day. If I can pay a little extra to not listen to my kids complain, and by listening to my kids complain listen to myself complain in my own brain about waiting in a line <laughs> because you know what happens they get sick of waiting in the line and then when there's three people in front of you they go i don't want to ride this anymore <laughs> like oh if i go to jail you're riding this fucking ride <laughs> we're gonna ride right. it twice now it was light out when it started it's dark okay we're, we're riding this ride yeah, we watched three people die in this line. You know? <laughs> it, you're right. Don't throw your arm out like that last guy, or you won't have that arm anymore. Yeah, so I don't frequent the parks. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but you guys well, get all the but there's all kinds of cool stuff too. Um, you know, the restaurants and everything else, all the little other attractions. This Casey, is a great question. Casey, do you paint on canvas? That's a great question. Oh. Uh, I do. It's it's okay. It's at an okay level. You know, I'm, I'm still working on that that skill for sure. It's different than painting statues and busts. So I've got the one behind me there. I'm oh, sorry, it's on the other side. The one behind me there, the octopus skull, that's the mm. last thing that I painted on canvas. I did it with a toothpick. Really good, though. Oh, wow. A toothpick. If you could see it up close, it's really crazy. It's got all kinds of crazy texture in it. It's just weird. You only did it with a toothpick? Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind seeing it up close. Can we? Uh, I don't know. I mean, Mickey, can you zoom in? I mean, I, mm -hmm. that thing's badass. It really is. I can. I don't. I don't understand how you do it with a toothpick. What? what? You get really oh close God. to its legs, and you can kind of see it's all that stuff going on. Wow. Oh my God. Okay. Jesus. So I That's... guess. I guess the simple answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get technical. Well, that was amazing, yeah. buddy. That's, that's, that's insane. No wonder, no wonder people see people asking you about that. That is, uh, thanks for showing us up close. That's that's beautiful. But then it, he also just like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that one was a commission piece I did recently. It was actually a drawing from a guy. He uh, him he said him and his buddy come up with that idea, like when they were in middle school. And he's been commissioning different art pieces for people, like paintings and drawings, and then he wanted a 3D piece for me, so that's what I turned out. <laughs> that is awesome. That comes out, that comes straight out of the mind of a young kid, believe me. Yeah, that is totally. Like a dino shark, but he's drinking, and he's got a machine gun. Yeah. A machine gun for an arm. <laughs> <laughs> the shark is full of Ricks. That's what he called it anyway. Oh, that's he's got a mom tattoo on his on his leg <laughs> that's got a heart and mom with an arrow going through a heart. It's crazy. <laughs> so good. So good. Yeah. So this, this is one of like one of the only uh, flat pieces that I saw, um, at least at the top of your Instagram, you had so many to go through, yeah. but uh, yeah, I definitely wanted to make this and ask you about that. But like the fact that you did, you know, that, that painting with <laughs> toothpick, that, that, that didn't even make sense. But, that's pretty uh, good, man. 
That's amazing. Time consuming. Very time consuming. I can imagine. I mean, I, I, I would I would question, but you know, you're drinking apple juice, but I would question if you were doing a, a stoned nightmare thing at that point when you're doing a toothpick painting. But uh, but I guess that was probably just right out of your mind instead of uh, with added, you know, you know, what what do you call that? Influence. Stuff? Influence. Thank, uh, you. Thank you. I might have had a little help, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say you, you, to, to to spend that much time on something, I would need help. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, oogie boogie. That's a good one, man. They're That's all good, really but good. Uh, you know, you you're good at painting as well. That it definitely gives it a different depth because a lot of times when I see your stuff, it's you, you post your sculpture it, with your card. You have a cardboard background, like. They're just you're pumping them out. You're like the Amazon of sculpting. <laughs> yeah, I usually uh, post it when it's sculpt is done, so they can check it out. If I'm doing it for somebody, then I do that in case they want to add something or uh, oh, okay, or change something that's changeable before I uh, before I paint it. So I send a picture when it's sculpted, and then I send a picture after it's painted in case there's anybody that wants any kind of adjustments. It's awesome. not very. It's not very often, but sometimes they want something a different color or something like that. But most of the time, they're like, "Send it." Yeah. <laughs> well, that and, and that's a testament to your to your style, right? So people expect to see a certain thing from you, and when you actually post it and it meets their expectations, they just want it. They know it met their expectation. That's a cool feeling, man. Yeah. And, and, and what a fun! What a fun! Like like I. You know, just to be the person who commissions it from you to see that, you know, posted piece, it's got to be a lot of fun too. To say, all right, this is this is actually going to be mine. I, I get, I'd get excited too. That's awesome. Can so I just the, say this is a tough? This is a tough subject. It is. I, I I'm all over the damn board. Um, uh, you know what though? Oh, nice Medusa, and that's that's the very classic version of Medusa as well. Mm-hmm. In their own so that's like size of like a, a hand, right? Or bigger. It's probably little, it's probably bigger than that. I can't remember the exact measurements on that one, but um, it's definitely bigger than hand. There was another one where he was just gave me the subject matter of what he wanted. He just wanted the the Medusa from um, Clash of the Titans, and that's what I did. I was like, Well, how do you feel about doing a like a severed head? And he was like, "That'd be awesome." So that's what I ended up doing. Oh, nice. Yeah. That painting, that uh, sculpting that body would have sucked and taken forever. <laughs> yeah, especially at that size, it would have been. Uh, yeah, it'd have been like nice. nearly three foot. You well, would have shipped it in like three or four different pieces. Well, they pay for the shipping, so I mean, they uh, they <laughs> pay, so if they want to do it in one piece, then that'd be all right. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Let's see some more. Let's see some more, Mick. I have, oh, okay. Obviously, everybody knows the Toxic Avenger. Yeah, that's a good one. Have you ever I'll done? Have you ever done like busts that hang on a wall? Because I, one of the things I, I desperately want before I, one of my bucket list things, having some alien heads and stuff on my wall is, is I want to have like a trophy wall of just the, the most bizarre shit you can make. And there's some really great artists that I want their stuff, but you know, for some reason, it costs like thousands of dollars. So I'm holding off. Maybe I'll build my own somebody. But have you ever done stuff that, that is like a trophy, like um, a, like a deer head or mounted head on a wall? Yeah, actually, I got stuff hanging on my wall. I got uh, like a werewolf and the Freddy from Dream uh, Dream Warrior. Is that what it is? Where he's the big green worm that's coming oh, out. Of yeah. The wall. Oh yeah. I got one of those, and uh, I've done a a sandworm from Beetlejuice. Oh, uh, I love that. Right. Black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, our, our buddy Carla did one of the amazing sandworm too. It, that, that's another one I gotta have too. Those are so, you know, just in my, in my mind, I have this vision of like every epic, horrible creature that I, you know, slayed, you know, is is on my wall. You know, again, it seems silly, right? But but that that the, but that sandworm be one or or um, you know, the American Wolf from London's head, you know, like you know, the actual. Those yeah, those are pricey. Things. I've done the same thing with that one, Maddie. That's like that's that's on my bucket list too. Is a like um, 
Yeah. They, it, I don't know. Art's expensive, Paul. Art's expensive. You know what he hasn't asked for though, Casey? He hasn't okay. asked for he hasn't asked for an NFZ from me. No big deal. Uh, you know there's NFTs. You know these NFTs. Yeah. I make yeah. NFZs and they're zombie bus that you can hang on your wall. And it's all the same freaking cast. Wait a minute. I didn't know they had but a name. They're all completely unique. I paint them all different. I got all variations. Just like right. that. Those people that do the 10,000 unique version generator of the same exact thing. All right. At the well, end of the day, it's the same exact thing. Then I, I got a character in mind. Don't worry about it, Matt. Matt, you died. You died to me as soon as you didn't put me in. There. I didn't know they were called in. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't now I know the name. Dear God, Jesus! I thought we were friends, Matt. I gotta be hey, honest. Come on, I gotta be honest. Mickey, cancel my flight. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna bring to Monster Palooza. We're gonna have some uh, NFCs. Okay. Non fungible yeah. zombies. Zombies. Yes. Yeah, exactly. They would sell. I'm sure they would sell. Oh God, yeah. I mean, yeah, got I got. I'll, hey, Casey, I'll give you one guess at somebody who won't buy one. He's right below you. Maybe. He's right below you. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to be the trash Matt show. But uh, welcome everyone to the uh, <laughs> international. Matt didn't say fast enough show. <laughs> yeah, no, it was – we sent out the memo. It was from 7.43 my time to 7.48. So I have two minutes left, actually. <laughs> and another thing, Hoppa. God damn it. God damn it. Dude, I love Mojo Jojo. And I've, have you guys seen the one where it's that they have the exposed brain? I don't know if you've seen that. Like, I, that, I don't know if that's it was – That's McGee. Like, isn't that Maggie Effects? Pat McGee that's what it is. I, I I love all of them. I love Powerpuff Girls. My girls, when they were little, all were. I have three daughters. They were all the three girls. At one point, we dressed them up, and my wife made them all costumes, and they were all like, you know, in the, with the arm in the air. And I I missed the opportunity to be the uh, to be Mojo Jojo on that on that Halloween. And now that they're all grown, they you know I'm sure they run and hide if I tried it this year. But um, but I just oh, I I've, always, I've always loved that show. And my one of my favorite is the. The guy with the big guy with the mustache and his and his secretary, um, who's who's you never see her head. I don't know if you know the show, but it's um, it's quite funny and um, no longer on the air, so I'll stop. <laughs> I don't remember that. I don't remember that character, but my kids used to definitely watch Powerpuff Girls. I, it was good. Mojo Jojo was great. Yeah, the, the that's why everybody was... recreates him. The guy was fantastic. Yeah, great character. The mayor, I think, was the guy. Matt. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to poop on you anymore because you're an amazing human being, and I love Please you. You're very handsome and tall. Yeah. Thank you. Um, no poop. If there was, if we got somebody to offer up their skilled services at Monster Palooza to turn you into Mojo Jojo, would you be okay with it? Um, I'd be the biggest, ugliest Mojo Jojo ever, but yeah, I'll do it. Dude, you'd be like Jumbo Mojo Jojo. You'd be like Harambe Mojo Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> if he made his cloak long enough, he could stand on his knees. And then you couldn't see his legs, and he could just scoot around on his knees. That's oh, it. he'd be like the dwarf of Mojo Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be sick. I'm in. Paul, I'm, I'm thinking you know. we both need to get made up and make up to make it realistic as to what we're doing out there. Yeah. And, and <laughs> we got to keep confusing people. I mean, Casey, you've been to Monster Palooza. You, you do all these shows and stuff like that. And what one thing that 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 you know we don't have any experience in is like, you know, we're not there to really sell anything. We're we're there just to experience it and kind of just shit hang with them. We're we're gonna be a bunch of dorks, okay? Fine, get it, fine. But at the same time, we're, we 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 we've been blessed enough to have amazing sculptors like yourself on our show who will also be there and be at these things. And so for us, it's like half of us just wants to hang out with them. That's a big half, and the other half wants to just meet more people and keep perpetuating this show and have more fun. But shit, we, we got like nothing to pedal. And I know that's a big part of Monster Palooza and getting your name out there and getting, you know, but for us, we're, I don't know, we're, maybe we're anomalies. I don't, what do you, I don't know. What do you think? We're not beholden. We don't have anything to sell. We, <laughs> we don't, but that's I, the part you need to change. I mean, you definitely obviously got the skill set. just make stuff that you can sell and do it. Yeah, but that's the thing. That's what we want to set the tone for. We're not there to sell. We're there to hang with the artists. 
we have our own thing. Matt and I are very successful at what we do. Mickey is a successful graphic artist, and Matt and I are successful in the fields that we work in. This is our passion. So to go out there and be able to nerd out and talk to all these great artists and and kind of ha kind of hang. I mean, we're hanging with produce, but it's <laughs> it's like a I, I don't know. It's like a it's like a boys' weekend filmed. But we have our own show. Like, the show is what it's all about. We want to talk to people. So it's basically like bringing the show to Monster Palooza. If somebody buys something off us, holy crap. That's that's fantastic. <laughs> if they get a sticker I, or, or a T-shirt, man, we are going to do backflips anyway. So Right. We'll have stuff, we'll have stuff to sell, per se. But I know, it, like, you know, conventions are where you make your bread and butter. You sell your stuff. But... Matt, Mickey, and I, we're, it's not like we're selling anything. We do this show because we love it. We were going to be doing it anyway. So this is the best way for us to communicate with great artists like yourself and all the people we've had on the show. So we've been lucky enough to have companies reach out and want us to do this show for them for workshops, mm. for team building. And we teach them how to carve a pumpkin. We can't, you know, we don't just get silly and have a couple of drinks and screw around with the wheel. We'll get serious and teach these people how to carve. And we've had rooms of what, 50, 60, 70 people. So the deal was whatever, however, however it becomes monetary, we turn that into adventures for carvers and creators. <laughs> so hence, we're going to LA to do Monster Palooza and hang out with, you know, a lot of friends that we've made on the show. Not only that, how else am I going to buy an American Werewolf in London head out from under Matt after he tries to buy it, and then I tell him he has a phone call, <laughs> then I go in and offer one more. And it's Monster Palooza for you guys. That are <laughs> Palooza. Monster Palooza. Yeah, it's like Monster Palooza. Now you've done it, Casey. How how was the show? What what did it do for you? Did you did you did you enjoy doing it before? No, I didn't uh, attend it as like a vendor. I just went out there to check it out. Mm. Yeah, I didn't I didn't do it. I've only done like the local cons here in uh, in Florida, like okay. the the okay. Megacon and the Spooky Empire and stuff like that. And then so what's I'm not the one you're doing. I would love to do an Astro What's the yeah, tell us the name of the one you're doing in in, uh, in May. Uh, it's the MegaCon in Orlando, Florida. MegaCon. I'm writing that one down here. Me too. Can you? Yeah, is there any way you can have it bumped up a couple weeks for us? <laughs> I don't think. No. Come on, just make a couple of calls. Oh, come on, man, go. just ask. It could See, never hurt. You guys, there. He'll. Oh, Swarm McCreary. All right. I don't nice. know Swarm McCreary. He's going to be at uh, Booth 100. I, I, I think that's. He said he'll be at Booth 100. All, All right. right on. That's an easy one to remember. Right on. Yeah. All right. Right on. I'm going, to write, yeah. I'm going to write that one down too. We'll be the weird guys, Cobb and Squash. <laughs> Hi, Terry. <laughs> Sometimes they have classes that you can host at the convention. conventions. Oh. Oh. That's I true. don't want. Oh, hell to the no. If. if... <laughs> I don't want to. No, I have no problem being up on in front of people, but yeah, I have a problem being up in front of people that are way more talented than me, trying to tell them how to do something. <laughs> <laughs> you see this tool, kids? <laughs> like, yeah, I got like eighteen hundred of them. Yeah, I, I made that tool. Uh, yeah, back yeah I'm like, I mean, holy shit! You have John there, Kemper. Yeah, I don't think I've seen any kind of uh, pumpkin carving classes or anybody even doing it at any of those that I've been to. So okay. you guys would stand out. I mean, you guys would be. Well, that shit be, ends this year. That shit ends this year. That's right. We Unfortunately, are, yeah. I don't think we can get pumpkins. <laughs> but, no, we've been trying. Honestly, yeah. Casey, we've been asking. We can get Kabul. We, we, I mean, we can get our Hubbards. Hubbards yeah. will be good. We can get those? Well, Mickey's securing them now. Oh, thank you, Mickey. With the, uh, right. the Los Angeles Mafia. <laughs> the, the, the vegetable mafia. The vegetable so Casey, mafia. are you are you from Florida? Did you grow up down there? No, I'm actually from North Georgia, uh, close to the Tennessee line. Yeah, 
I'm okay. moved in here because there was All nothing right. going on up there. Sure. Yeah. A lot of woods and a lot of nothing. So, you, you, you guess you, so you went straight to central, straight to central Florida. You didn't even stop at the Florida Bama line or anything, huh? No, no, I just said, yeah, this looks good. Let's, let's stop here. That oh, boy. It is a good spot. I mean, it's a good landing spot. Little far ride to the beach, though. An hour and a half is a far ride. Yeah, but you go either direction, you get you get the beach, though. That's the nice, the nice part. Yeah, but you want to go Gulf side. Do you agree, Case? You want to go Gulf side. No, you can go to, like, St. Augustine. That's nice yeah. as hell. It's cold. Yeah, no, the, the Gulf side, I think, is better for sure. I don't yeah, want to make anybody angry about the other side, so I'm not going to say anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. This shocks on both sides, and I'm all set. The, the, he's, he means to say shark. Just you know, not, oh, not the, oh, wait, not, you know what, Matt, you did get it because now it's the shit on Paul's accent for the next. <laughs> <time>. <laughs> hey, I got I got shit on earlier now. I got to turn the shit around somehow. No, I, can't I can feel I can feel your venom hopper. I love I it. I can't take it. I just can't take it. Like you know, like anyway, it's S H A R K. You know, yes. there's a yeah, for shock. Sure. I'll tell you, spell it. Shock. There's no. There's not three A's in a row. You know, just sorry. no. It's yeah, that's a. what I was gonna say. The the clear water. The Clearwater is clear really nice. Yeah, Clearwater is nice. Tierra Verde, Siesta Keys, anything down that way. St. Pete's, that's pretty good, too. We saw a guy walking down the beach in a marble bag. He, I think he was from France. <laughs> he had to, right? Who the hell's walking around in a marble bag? But we were on one of those beaches with the beautiful sand and everything, and I have this thing about sharks, so me and the wife are walking down the beach, and I'm like, there's a shadow in the water. Like, mm. that's either a school of fish or a bull shark. Ooh. And she's like, would you please, like, have a drink? Relax. Yeah. And this guy in the marble bag goes, shark, shark. And he starts screaming and pointing at the water. So yeah. I look at my wife and basically say, I told you so. <laughs> All commonly, <laughs> as someone's about to die. And then yeah. this thing swims by. Now it's like 12, 15 feet long. Swims by this guy just floating in the water, minding his own business. But he's not freaking out. He just looks down at it, and this thing comes up. The shadow out of the water comes up and just pff, breathes out, and it was a manatee. No way. Yeah. Uh, what the yeah. hell? How That's disappointing. Crazy. I was hoping to see Jaws. <laughs> no, no, you I was, you I was way happier see. for the people in the water. That was for sure, because some people were trying to get out of that water like it was boiling. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Have you guys yeah. ever seen a? Sure. You guys know what a, a, a bait ball is? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so we're, we're we're in St. Augustine. That's why I'm, I'm you know I'm driving you know, pushing for that side. So one time when the kids were little, and and it's beautiful flat you know um, really fine sand beach is really nice. So I'm just you know my plug, but just off the the like two or three waves back all of a sudden a wave crest and you just see it looks like black behind it We're like what the hell is that and you realize that um some bigger fish i don't know if they're sharks or whatever had chased them into the into the um what do you call it, the beach and so my girls were, were like waist deep water and we're like what is that and next thing you know you see a, a giant white belly of some I, I think it was a fish it could have been a shark turning in, in with its mouth open in inside the wave and going after that black bait ball of, of other small fish. And the girls like are like doing what Paul was saying. They're just like, you know, chariots of fire, dun, 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 like running into the, and I'm standing out there with my mouth open going, wow, it just was that close to you to, to be able to see it. Anyway, I, um, I, I, it was really cool to see like that close. I, I don't know if that was my encounter with a shark, but it was, uh, is as close as I ever want to get. That's for sure. My response is f that. There's a pool at the hotel. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want nothing to do. I agree with Jim. Yeah, more people have died from telling their wife, "I told you so." Mm. <laughs> yeah, Jim, oh yeah, no, but you, you never meant me when I say I told you so. It's a excuse me, everybody. Could we gather up? I'd like to announce that I told her so. <laughs> Well, hey, just just so you guys know, Jim Jim uh, is a fa friend of the show. He was one of the first, actually our first guest. He's first doing guest of the show. Have you ever seen? You see what he's making? So Casey, um, he's he did a butternut, a really cool sculpt of a butternut. 
and then wrapped it with chia seeds and is now in the mix in, in the midst of uh taking that and watching it so so as the thing kind of gets gross it's going to be growing this hair it is a pretty smart idea i can't wait to see the final you know disgusting oh, product cool. yeah. i love the science of it too because in the time it takes chia seeds to germinate it's kind of like you're running out of that time with the squash. It's rotting, yeah. It's a race between the two to see who can outlast the other. So, and Jimmy's the first one I've seen do it. And Jim's, he's done it a couple of times. So, it's coming along, Jim. I'm rooting for you. I love mm -hmm. seeing it. It's yeah, pretty it's, cool, man. In, in the world of pumpkin sculpting, we're running out of ideas, okay? Just so we all know. <laughs> Whoa. What? No, I'm just you know Mickey. throwing out there. Not not us. I'm saying other people are not not us. We'll fix that and edit. We'll put, yes. we'll fix yeah, that. We get, we get oh, we're, we're full of ideas. Fix Plenty of ideas. We got lots more. Hey, no, we don't need go. wheels. We don't need any wheels to tell us what the car. We just have them off the top of our head. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys get to probably get this a, a lot. What what's the what's your favorite thing? Is there a favorite thing, or is it just like another thing? You just on to the next thing. What is your favorite thing? Oh no! What's our favorite thing oh, that, that, that we sculpted? That, that they the weave sculpted. The weave sculpted. Everyone's That's favorite deep. thing that they've sculpted. Yeah. What's your favorite sculpture of all time? Yeah. I mean, oh, or do you, That's such a hard question. You have one, or do you do you just on to the next thing, or you know what I mean? Or do you even? Yeah, it changes actually all the time depending on my mood, right? So I always go with the Tom Brady thing, which is my favorite sculpt is the next one. But but then again, there's a couple that I look at, and it's like, wow, I, I a what? How did I do that? And and b can I do that again? But not do that again as in replicate it, but get the same uh, detail. You know that same when you get an emotion to kind of shine through without it looking wonky. You know what I mean? Sometimes mm -hmm. you're trying to do an emotion. You're like, that just looks friggin' stretched. Oh, that's just wrong proportionally. Sometimes you get it right and you're like, holy shit, that's good. And then it, with me and Matt, it's like, hey, that's really good. You take a couple pictures and then you're like, well, I'm going to feed it to the chickens. <laughs> <I'm> going <laughs> to throw it to the javelina. Mm -hmm. It's gone. We don't, we don't have them anymore. So if we do have a moment that we really, really like or wish we could recreate, those would be the favorites. And and I have a couple and I bounce back and forth. But my favorite one lately, I guess, would be the um what do you call them? Plankton. Mm, that's a great one. Oh yeah, that was yeah, I seen that. It was super dope. Thank you. So that, yeah. that one didn't start out as your favorite though, Paul, if I remember right. And no, it, they it, never it, do, but but yeah. it was my favorite for the reason that, like I was saying, it was a normal like it was a squash like this one. Like, you know, everybody can buy this kind of not too tapered at the top. It's kind, it's a little tall, but these ones don't really have a core. Like it's almost solid, mm -hmm. which is weird when you get to the bottom bell where there's more space, where there's a cavity of seed, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was doing the plankton one, I'm, I'm like expecting, all right, I'm going to break through. Here we go. That'll be the stopping point. And then I was able to do two molars on each side. Like he was like an eight-year-old child. I feel like a dentist. I actually had the dental tools out. And it's like, wow, I'm not breaking through on this. So I spent a lot more time on it. So I, what I liked about it is I knew the time I invested. And when I took the picture, you could see about 75 to 80% of the detail. Because it's so hard to catch all that detail. You know what I mean, Casey? Like you take a picture and if the light ain't right or you don't. You know, I mean, the angle isn't right. It's your eyes see it a certain way, and then you take a picture, and you're like, "Well, that's not what it looks like." Damn it! Yeah, I'm totally <laughs> talking about the the pictures. The picture pictures taking hard. <laughs> and and that's the end all be all for us. My wife gets on to me all the time. She's like, "I'm gonna take pictures and do it for like five hours." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I have like a five minute cutoff on a picture. Time. But but it's, it's but it's all about lighting, especially like when it's a three D sculpture and you're lighting it from the top and you're trying to get all that. Especially I mean you, Casey, when you, because it's colored and you want to catch all the detail, you want to catch all the all the painting that you did. I'm I'm sure that's another. I mean, you almost have to. That's one place I wish I was better at. I'm sure there's all kinds of YouTube classes I could take on 
photography, but I just, I've, I wish I had a pro photographer just like, let me just hand you this. You get it back to me. But no. Oh my God. I'd love that. <laughs> photography skills are super amateur. I'm like holding lights here and holding lights there and trying to yeah. take a picture and trying to hold a lot crazy and just try to get the yeah. light where it fits it right. You know, it's so crazy. <laughs> No, what's funny is I'll run. Right. I'll take my pictures down wherever I carve it, right? So then it just looks like an extension of what I did, and I'll get it pretty good. But then I'll go upstairs, and if if it's if it's still daylight, I'll throw it down on my kitchen table, and just take a quick snapshot or two of it before I show the kids or whatever. And then I'm like, God damn, it looks ten times better in this light. <laughs> it's like I just wasted a half hour telling this thing it was a llama. You're a llama. <laughs> so it never worked. Whatever. You, I, as an artist, I don't think you're ever happy with what you do. Uh, it's not. A, it's not for us, right? It's not for us to decide. It's for, it's for the fans of of what we create to judge it. People who dig it. Yeah. Yeah, and if they don't, fuck them. I'm sorry. What was that a lot? My bad. No. So, that's that's the Lefrog Lefroig talking. Yeah, Lefrog. It's very so, peaty. Speaking of that, how's your apple juice going there, uh, Jason? Good? Yeah, slow down. You got to drive. So I'm on my third glass. Whoa. It must be apple cider. Yeah. Is it Dickens? Is it Dickens cider? <laughs> it is. Is it good? It is. I'm like, how's Dickens cider? Never had that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, hard. Oh, Jim had a question. Oh, hey, Jimmy. Yeah, if Paul and I, we think, I think the average is about three hours after the hour and a half we put on this thing. Because, as you know, when you block it out and you get kind of interested in it, and it's like kind of starting to talk to you a little bit. And then when the all the Hollywood lights and cameras go off, and you know. All of a sudden, we're you know back on our own own again, and out of all the spotlight that we're here tonight, you put a different set of eyes on it though, and, and I think Casey, oh, that's a great maybe a good segue question for you. When you're making these, I know you crank them out, and I've seen you do amazing things like Paul mentioned. But do you ever like get up, walk away, get a sandwich, you know, you know, do you, and you come back and you have like a whole new view of it um, you didn't before, or, or do you just power through? We'll wait. <laughs> Dramatic pause. Oh, that was. There's usually a little bit of this with the beard when you get that kind of pause. So, so I, Casey, I can you hear me? I guess can that's the first. Can you hear question. us, Casey? Casey, can you hear? Oh, you were asking me. I didn't hear my name. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, "How much?" How percent yeah. you know? That was a very dramatic pause. Okay, yeah. So, so question <laughs> is. When, when you're working on something, do you walk away and then come back and have a new set of eyes on it? Does it does it affect how you do the, the rest of the sculpture? No, it just may – sometimes it might change the detail and maybe I'd like, you know, add something to it. But usually I have a pretty good uh, thought of the direction I'm going with it when I start it. Okay. It just kind of – I know it's kind of crazy. It's kind of like I start it and then it just kind of forms, but I don't you know. It just kind of works out. It's just really strange, I guess. That's great. Shit, I wish that was way, way for me. I, 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 it tends to be better if I leave it and come back, but that's yeah. me. Nope, Maddie, I'm with you 100, percent brother. But the this, all right. So there's a difference between what Casey does and what we do. And there's a lot of similarities, right? Because of the volume at which we're doing it. So it, everything's going real fast. But you and I are dealing with something that is going to spoil. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Casey's working at a breakneck pace, like a marathon runner, though. Like, he, so his mind is churning just as fast as ours. Our our minds are churning against each other, where we're like, "This sucks. Throw it away. Um, <laughs> figure out what you're gonna do." Casey seems to be like, "Ah, you know what? I'm gonna go this way," and boom, I'm done. Yeah. Whereas you, <laughs> you and I seem to be like, "Well, it was a good run." <laughs> I think I'm I done. I, I, suck it. Suck it. I think I don't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, Mickey, go back to the uh, go back to SpongeBob. That's that's 
so badass. Great I, I paint, too, by the way. Great paint. Paint's great. Paint's Everything great. about it. I want that in my house somehow. And you know what's funny? I would normally say we got to get you a better backdrop, but the, the cardboard has become your staple. The cardboard is your signature. That's how I know it's you, Kate. I see the cardboard backdrop. <laughs> my grandma my wife would totally disagree. She's like, she's like, it looks like you're taking pictures in an alleyway somewhere. So she bought me this lot box. And uh, the only thing about that is if it's if it's a certain height, I can't put it in there. And uh, so oh. I'm building stuff that's larger, so I got to use the cardboard backdrop. You should have told her not to cheap out on the light box height. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you, know, you know, Paul. You know, Paul. We're going to Orlando, and she's going to find you now. And, and yeah, she's going to slap me. That's why I only said it. Uh, it's not like Chris Rock and uh, Will Smith. Like I can say whatever I want. I'm not going to get slapped. <laughs> Until you so get sometimes it works, and sometimes it don't. But I like how the cardboard looks because it sometimes makes the colors pop better. I don't know yeah. why. It just well, I just do it, it does. Well, because it's a neutral color. Yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you, that's what drew me to your stuff was because you were just, it was the consistency of it. Like you didn't change shit. Like it was almost like you were racing, but you were putting out great sculpts over and over and over. And after a while, I'm like, holy shit. It's not like nothing's being staged. You know, like Matt and I will take a nice photo. We'll, we'll try and have a composition and we'll put a filter to kind of blur out the background so you can focus on what's in the front and, you're just banging these things out and they look great. And it was that's what drew me to you at first is the sheer velocity yes. that you can pump these things out at such a high quality. So that's what impressed me. So I like the cardboard. I think it's it's your staple, man. You should literally have a cardboard colored shirt. <laughs> I'll work on that. Just have a big square cardboard on me on the shirt or a cardboard just, shirt. Yeah, like a, you just call it a corrugated men's large. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah, oh Terry, hates, Terry hates Terry hates cardboard. What's up with Terry? Yeah. Terry hates cardboard. Wait, what happened? Yeah, that's my wife. She hates cardboard. Terry hates oh, cardboard. Oh, it. All right. Yeah, that's her. I hate the cardboard. Yeah, that's her. Well, Terry, you bought the wrong light box, so you don't get to have an opinion <laughs> on cardboard anymore. I'm sorry. All right, here's more cardboard. <laughs> oh, and, <laughs> and there's more cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Terry's pissed. She she does not like you, Paul. I think you just made an enemy. What the hell are you talking? Oh, well, she doesn't because you said so. Well, yeah, you know, I'm just I'm just assuming here, just like you know, that's the right thing to do. I don't like your attitude, I Hopper. <laughs> <laughs> I I I wanted. To, I'm going to put up this question, but the, you you want to short circuit Paul right now? Um, Ever you ever three D yeah. scan? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, apparently I'm not really good at it because I tried. I have a three D scanner. I got the Pop Two, the new one, and that you know what? I deal with technology on my side of my real career all day, and this is just a new one that I know I'm probably doing wrong. Same here. Ish. Do you agree, Matt? There's, yes. There's, I, a, le there's a learning curve there, but at this point. If you lose fucking tracking, excuse me for my language, you should not have to start over. GPS is GPS, right? So if, if, if that thing loses tracking, you should be able to back set, reset from your starting point, try again. What I'm finding is these things don't have it. It's, it's like working in super slow motion to capture, and then you don't get all the detail you want, and then, then you got to have ZBrush to fill in the void. A bunch of yeah, yeah. but I, I reserve the right to change my mind once I learn to use it like an adult because <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely tried to buzz through it like I was gonna run the world. But have you ever, have you ever 3D scanned anything, Casey? Because it, it is it, it, there's a big learning curve. Have you ever tried that? No, to me, I know it sounds bad to the people that use the 3D printer world, but it's kind of blasphemous to me just because I custom sculpt everything. And, uh, but I mean, there's some beautiful stuff. I've seen some real beautiful stuff with the 3D printer. I mean, well, the, so the, the I big can't thing say, I can't say anything about the quality of it. Well, think think of this the difference between 3D printing and 3D scanning. So, what, what, what Paul and I have been trying to do in the world of like trying to preserve this longer than they 
last and they rot, right? So, so getting a catalog of what we've sculpted, so we take a 3D scanner and we'll, we'll scan our, our specific art that we made, you know, so it is, to me, it's a little bit, I, we'll call it more pure. I don't know, it's as opposed to like the 3D sculpted one, but, but um, that's, what, that's what we're referring to because I think when it comes to 3D scanning, I, I, that's a whole nother mind. Like you said, it, it, it's, it, there is some beautiful stuff out there, but it also, it is a little bit of a, all right, I'm going to take somebody else's art and scan it. I'm going to you know, change it a little bit and make it mine. I, I, I'm with you. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that, but it's this, the, the 3D scanner, like, like Paul was saying, it's this, this, this thing is this, you know, I'll show you a picture of it. So it's this, um, a scanner that you set on a little tripod and the tripod itself then, you know, it becomes the, the device at which you then, you know, circle the thing around it and you can, and then, then you get a map of it in, in three dimensions. And then, then you can either 3D sculpt it or I guess there's a million things you can do, but it's a file and it doesn't necessarily rot, right? Well, that's really cool though, because then you, like you said, you could keep a file, maybe you can print out the stuff that you've, the ideas that you've made and stuff. And that, that's a cool, it's a cool concept. Yeah, and, it, and you can you can blow it up. You can make them small. You can you know, put it on a magnet. You can make it into a giant, you know, the, as big as you want. So it, that's it, – but it, 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 shit, it's hard. It's, it's uh, also a catalog of what you've done. If you can 3D scan something, even if it's not 100% to a point, mm -hmm. and have it in that 3D file in that format, and you do have the software to – in a 3D realm to – go in and fix those little things, the, the, the spots that are missing, right? So in a ZBrush or Blender or whatever they are. So you take that file and you can plug in the, the missing pieces. Even if it's just to catalog what you've done, even if you yeah. never print it, you can look at it from the side and be like, okay, so that's what I did there. You know what I mean? Like if you're looking at angles or whatever, you have that, even if it's just virtual, I mean, printing it is pretty cool, but honestly, for my own, I love I love having the pictures. But unless I max out my phone with a million different angles of everything I've done, I do spend a lot of time going, "How the hell did I achieve that effect? <laughs> like, what did I do that that I'm having a problem here?" So if I had that catalog of of that stuff to ref, that's my own reference of my own work that's original to me. That would help me kind of stay on track. And it wouldn't hurt if somebody was like, hey, I'd really love to have a copy of blah, blah, blah. And you'd be like, well, I just fixed it up in ZBrush and I can help you out. I mean, because who doesn't want a copy of a squash that I carved from a year ago <laughs> on their countertop? You know what I mean? Matt, you know what I mean. I'm laughing because I'm like, yeah, I, Matt, I really want that copy of, of that uh, Remember that the squash grueling, you carved that guy with, with the boogers? Yeah, can you give me that one? <laughs> uh, I don't so think silly. it's a bad idea. I don't think it's a bad idea at all. A lot of people, there's like a weird trendy thing where people love like like f different foods looking like monsters and stuff. I think that True. you could, I think that it's something that's very marketable for sure. I mean, right. really. Listen, we'll market whatever we can as long as it's still fun to us because everything that we are doing is hilarious to us. <laughs> we're doing this anyway. Like I would, if you guys were here or not, I'd probably be, I would probably just be upstairs at my kitchen table with my kids bouncing around and I'd be carving into a squash or clay or something. Just in, in this, the, the, the point of this whole show was just to take a couple of guys like Matt and I and Mickey and bring in other guys that we know, guys and girls, sorry, we know are always doing the same thing, a creative type. Like, you can't not be doing something creative, right? Yeah. Especially you, Casey. Jesus. Dude, you, I know. You you're like the Boston it. Marathoner of sculpting. <laughs> like, you have to have a sculpt on every mile. When yeah. you get up in the morning, Casey, and you have your cup of coffee, are you like... Sculpt in the shower. I was gonna say you you have the because you you spend eight eight plus hours a day doing this stuff. Do you, are you like uh, are you going from a list of things you have like uh, tomorrow I got to get to the X Y Z today it's gonna be or are you just kind of like I mean I, I I how do you stay motivated Maybe that's my my roundabout question there. Yeah, it's it's definitely I've got definitely got a list. I'm, I'm booked till like January. I mean not January. Excuse me. I'm booked till July, 
So, I mean, there's a big list of stuff of commissions and then there's a big long list of stuff that I just want to make to take to conventions that I'm trying to go through through the year. So, so it's just go down the list when I got time and just put it in the slot, you know, and, and just keep going. So that that can be sculpting constantly. That's pretty much what I do. So jealous. I want to do that. Paul, I want to do that. Right. We've always, that's, we, that's a recurring theme on the show, right, Mickey? We, we just, that's what we want to do. We just, yeah. just want to do that. It's exactly what I want to do, but apparently tomorrow I have to give a speech to high school students on why they should get into professional construction. <laughs> oh, well, good. good. You know, that's, yeah, they need that's to- the world I'm caught between. <laughs> <laughs> I did iron my clothes for tomorrow, though. I am going to look phenomenal. <laughs> Don't know you what I'm going to say yet. What, what's, what's the outfit? Is it a suit or is it like a, just a, a – you're wearing like no. a – No, well, I'm going to roll with hammer pants. Seen. I've got a hammer pants made by Skids. Oh. <laughs> and a sequin vest I, I had commissioned. So I'm hoping the kids like it. Also by Skids. Oh, yeah. Skid Row. That's where I'll be living next week if anybody's <laughs> So, Paul, while you're at it, uh, why don't you show us uh, what you've been carving there? All right. All right. <laughs> wow. No, well, I'm going slow on this one because this was a this is a tough subject. So we went. So it's gonna be stoned nightmare fuel. I haven't decided which way I want to go with the nightmare fuel. So whether it's gonna be a demon or if it's gonna be a ghoul, whatever. So I kept. I kept the the nose area large, and I didn't go too deep. I know the eyes. I'm just trying to get that stoned kind of the brow. This will change humongous. So I, so I just kind of scratched in where center of lid is. And even down here, I still haven't decided if his mouth is going to be open or if I like how this is a sort of a pouty, fatty area for a lower lip. You can kind of almost see how that would just be like if he was grinning. Mm-hmm. He's all stoned. So I don't want to take too much away from this either because that would be pursed. So really just finding shapes at this point because this one's really driving me nuts. And I don't want it to be – I don't want to blast through it. I want to make sure it's good. So I have a couple ideas as to the direction I want to take, but it's going to take a ton of super glue <laughs> and, and extra time with knives, which nobody wants to watch me work with. So. There will be none of none of this will be there when I'm done. I'm pretty much pretty much sure I'm gonna have to take the back off to bring to the front to make it look like I want. I have kind of an idea, but I want to make sure it's nightmare fuel before it's stoned, right? Yeah, stoned is easy. Nightmare fuel needs to be needs to be something. It needs to be something cool. So I don't want to rush that part. It's not fair to everybody else. <laughs> That looks good so far. Oh, you're sweet. Um, Mwah. Ah. Mwah. All right. Oh, look at Maddie go though. All right, so I, I I'm I'm in the same place, Paul. I'm I'm no idea where the hell this is going, but so I've got this big giant fat lip, and, and originally I started I was thinking like, so this is really actually hard to see. What the hell is my problem? Okay, maybe this this will help a little bit, maybe. Okay, so don't look at me. In fact, I'm going to do this so you can see this better. F me. Get me out of here. In the A-H. <laughs> okay, so this guy, he's, oh, got this giant, he's got a giant lump coming over this side, and then he's got to have one, two, three, four eyes. Wow. And then he's got – and then I, I'm going to try – I think I'm going to sneak a joint in his mouth somewhere over here like he's puffing it. Um, but all of, I wanted to make the heavy, heavy eyelids, right? Because apparently that's what happens when you're stoned. I don't know what all these other bumps are going to be yet, but right now I'm just keeping them there for uh, extra fun. But that's um, that's kind of where I'm going right now. And he's going to be. I love it. I love it. He's got a big, fat, goofy, wide mouth. So anyway, we'll see. Yeah, super cool. All right, hey, Mick. Mick, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> uh, nothing good. Casey, what do you, let's see what you're working on. 
Yeah, we got to see Casey. For Casey's wow. painting his yeah. right now. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's totally what I'm doing. No, I, I just got. I worked on the stone part first, so he's kind of nice. <laughs> he's gonna have a big uh, nailed a big it. joint in his mouth. Let's see. Holy! Uh, oh, that looks a little different to me from here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that those eyes are are awesome, Casey. Perfect. Those are Perfect. that is so that is so. Yeah, awesome. yeah. It's still working. It's still getting there. But I, I was focusing on the stone part first, and I, I think he might be almost there. He needs a couple more. A couple puffs? Yeah. Nice. That was great, man. I love that you took the challenge. That's huge. We appreciate that. Yeah, it was super cool. Yeah, I mean, that's the that's the, the fun part of this show. I mean, we, we stretch ourselves, and I know you've got a million other commissions and things, so for you to take time out and, and, uh, and throw – Throw some clay on a board with us has been that's been awesome, phenomenal. I and mean, it's been an honor to be on the show. I'm I'm really happy I got the opportunity. It's really yeah. awesome. Well, I didn't, I didn't over yet. We have we have a bunch of really terrible things to tell you in the next uh, <laughs> four minutes. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's right. power through some of that. Ah, I love that one. That's kind of one of my ones. favorites. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. some super awesome ones that, and, and again, I like to think that these <sighs> are just like made in a day, like. Outstanding. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, it's bullshit. Two, I think he lives on a different days. planet. He lives on a different two planet. Days. 48 hours is a day. Yeah. <laughs> Audrey. Yeah. Yeah, I usually do eight hour days, sometimes seven, but um it's oh, usually yeah. uh, but the variation is just so amazing too. I mean, because like you get in something nice. that's really yeah. iconic like this, then you've got you know, but every one of them are just so immediately recognizable. That's yeah, swamp thing. Yeah, and yeah. Th this was a cool one that that was kind of out of out of uh, the realm of of uh, what you do. I, I mean, this is super cool. What, so what what is this one? Actually, that was for a a, a fish store place. They were going to use it as a giveaway for uh, something. I couldn't remember what the reason was. But uh, he wanted a medallion for his giveaway for his uh, his, fi his fish store. <laughs> that's so cool. Make a good belt buckle. That yes. would. That's like that's a that's bad. Like that's so awesome. Hey, it's a Mario. <laughs> <laughs> and and the the seamless looks good on this one. This is the light box, obviously, right? Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, Nikki. There you go. I got, a, yeah. I got an eye for these things. I got a light oh, box geez, right here. Right to give it validation to the wife, to Terry. <laughs> if you can't see cardboard, then it's it's light box. Come on, it's Howard. <laughs> Everybody oh, loves Howard. Yep. And then this is one that you were working on recently, right? Yeah, I just finished that one yesterday. Well, That's the sculpting for what you normally do too. Like I never yeah. see you do too much of that kind of um, super. It, that that almost looks porturity. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's very serious. It's very near to the the original. Yeah. Yeah. And I do love the fact that there's cardboard in the background. Yes. <laughs> the signature. Always, always do the cardboard. Calling card. That's his calling card. That's yeah. your signature, dude. <laughs> Hang on to it. Don't well, let Terry. Good. Don't let Terry paint it black anymore. <laughs> 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 well, if you want to see more from Casey of his work, um, go to his Instagram. Is there anywhere else that we he can, uh, or anybody that wants to commission you? Um, okay. yeah, okay. I'm very responsible on Instagram. That's usually where I get most of my stuff from. But I do have a Dark Heart Creations page on Facebook. You just look up Dark Heart Creations. I'm that guy. Oh, okay. And you're going to be at a convention coming up in May. Yeah, May 19th through the 22nd, uh, Orlando Megacon. Right on. Right on. Well, here's where you can find us. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, guys, any last words before we sign off for this week? Yeah, okay. give this guy some love. This guy's fantastic. He Thanks. pumps out clay like we half pump out. <laughs> Pumpkins. Pumpkins, squash. Yeah, and, and see if you can get, his, get on his list. He's way faster than us. <laughs> oh, I know, and way better. So, it's oh, they have shirts on Etsy too, guys. Don't look, don't cheap out on the Etsy page. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Jesus, what would you do without Terry, sense. honestly? What would you be doing without Terry? <laughs> you know. you, hey, you married up, just like I think I did. And, and I know, Paul, you married up. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you telling me You're that. Good so nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd be in jail. I'd be in jail if I didn't. Yeah, I know. I would not. Maybe a quarter of the man. I wouldn't certainly be on the phone with you guys. I'd be. That, I, did they do this from jail? I don't know if they let you do a YouTube show. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'd, be, I'd be giving out cans of ramen for an extra five minutes of internet time. <laughs> so, uh, Casey, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we definitely would love to have you back if you're. Uh, oh, well, well, but we're also, you know, they're they're going to see you in, in Florida potentially, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that Wednesday, whatever that Wednesday is, we dude, we'll, we'll we'll let you know where we are and we'll we'll get a beer together or an apple juice. An yeah, apple it sounds juice. great. Yeah. Some gator nuggets. <laughs> we'll eat some, yeah, I eat some gator. That's what all the tourists do. All right. Gator tail is good. It's delicious. So it's thanks delicious. for joining us, everyone. Uh, join us. Join us next Thursday, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, for another Carvers and Creators. Good night, everyone. Take care. Not everybody. Good night, guys.